Hey there you guys, Irene Lyon here. Welcome to this video, to this YouTube channel, and to this world of healing trauma, nervous system health, and all things neuroplasticity. Thank you so much for being here. Today I wanna to get into a more sciencey topic. It is something I've covered a little bit in the past, but I've never named it specifically, and that is the polyvagal theory. I will say it one more time, the polyvagal theory. Basically, poly means many, vagal means the vagus nerve, and this is a very, important nerve. Well, I guess all nerves are important, aren't they? But this is one of the key ones that we need to understand fully, like fully, 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 and I'll get into that today, in order to heal trauma and restore health back to our nervous system. I've got a book here I want to show you. This is the magnum opus of the polyvagal theory. It's written by Dr. Stephen Porges. He was the person, he is the person that really put this nerve on the map. And he really did the research and the study and the scrutiny to figure out what it is that's different about us humans as mammals compared to say reptiles or birds or other animals that just don't have that social connection part. And so the title of this book, I'll read it out, is Neurophysiological Foundations of Emotions, Attachment, Communication and Self-Regulation. Those are a lot of big words. So emotions, attachment, communication, and self-regulation. If you've been following me for a while, you know that these are four areas that I'm always talking about in some way, shape, or form. If it's not directly, it's on the sidebar. So quick note about the polyvagal theory. It is a real thing. It is an explanation that gives us information about how we find safety, how we find connection with others, how we shut down, how we go into fight and flee responses, how we survive. It, it, it explains all of the things that we talk about here and all of the trainings and teachings I've studied through Peter Levine and Kathy Kane and even Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais. So first thing you need to know is the vagus nerve basically is our parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm gonna talk a few pieces and then I'm gonna bring them all together. So the parasympathetic nervous system is part of our autonomic nervous system. I'll post another video that goes into all these branches in intricacy, so please watch that after this one. So the parasympathetic nervous system, part of the autonomic nervous system, which is part of the peripheral nervous system, this is known as our slowing down nervous system. Some people say rest, digest, but that isn't 100% accurate because there are multiple branches of the parasympathetic nervous system of the vagus nerve, hence polyvagal theory. So keep that kind of on the side for now. Second thing you need to know, there are three kind of neural circuits within this polyvagal theory that are responsible for overall regulation and function of the human system. One of them we would call immobilization. And so that is part of the parasympathetic. So I'll say that again, immobilization. The other is mobilization. That is to act, to move, to fight, to flight. That is part of our sympathetic nervous system, which is not part of the vagus nerve. It's just part of another branch of our nervous system. And then the third neural circuit that is responsible for regulation and, and just how we work in general is what we would call social engagement or social connection. This is important when we look at what, for example, an infant, so a newborn baby comes out, they have no skills to connect and self-soothe. The part of them that we need to prime and perk up and teach and model to is this part of the polyvagal theory, the social engagement, the social connection part. This is part of the parasympathetic nervous system, but it's not part of the rest digest. I told you it was a little complex. So I'm gonna review those again. There are three basic neural circuits for regulation function. So immobility or immo immobilization, um, the ability to mobilize. So that could be something like fight flight, but it also could be the energy to get up in the morning, the ability to go out and walk, to exercise, to do chores around the house, to have the, the 
interest in just getting up and going. I've talked about the importance of healthy aggression in other videos. I'll post those below as well. Um, but this ability to move forward, to just get going, that is part of our mobilization um, nervous system, part of the sympathetic. And then the third neural circuit, this idea of how we as mammals connect, communicate, and engage. Again, that's part of the parasympathetic nervous system, but different than the part of the parasympathetic nervous system that immobilizes us and puts us into rest digest. Okay, so polyvagal, again, means many. So if I go back to this idea of our fight, our flight, our freeze, and our connection, I'll break these branches down. So stay with me here, or maybe get a pen and paper out and write them down. So again, we've got this ANS, autonomic nervous system. That branches off to the SNS, sympathetic, or, and I should say the PNS, the parasympathetic nervous system. The SNS is pretty simple. It's about mobilization. It's about getting up and going. So we'll just leave that one to the side. The PNS, that is more complex. We have two branches that then divide further. So one branch is the immobilization. That is the shock state. That is the freeze state. We say a person is in freeze, a person is in shock. They're in kind of a catatonia. This, this very low metabolism, low oxygen, blood pressure goes down, heart rate goes down, all of that. So this is part of the parasympathetic nervous system. I'm gonna add in one more word. It's part of the dorsal vagus, dorsal vagus. And the only reason it's called that is because the part of that nerve, the vagus nerve that comes out of the brain and comes through the brainstem, not through the brainstem, around the brainstem, it goes to the back. Dorsal means back. And so the part of the parasympathetic nervous system, the part of the vagus nerve that governs our shutdown, freeze, you know, prepare for death kind of thing, that is the dorsal branch of the vagus nerve and it runs back of the brainstem and then it goes into the gut and into the viscera. And if you think about it, to give you an example, if someone was to go into shock, we would want them, or we would hope, you know, let's just say there's a giant cut or an accident and their, their life needs to be preserved. The system will go into a shock response, this parasympathetic, dorsal vagal shutdown freeze response to preserve heart rate goes down, blood pressure goes down, etc. Okay, so remember that one. That is the branch of the vagus nerve that is parasympathetic, that is for immobilization, shutdown, preservation of life, etc. Low oxygen, all of that. The other part of the slowing down is called the rest digest. Now this one's a little different. This is technically called the, the, the dorsal as well, the dorsal vagal branch of the parasympathetic, but it is not the high tone dorsal that shuts us down. It is the low tone dorsal that puts us into kind of that nice rest, digest, post eating, you get a little sleepy, all the blood goes to the gut, you digest, all those things. The low tone dorsal is also what we want to be in when we're sleeping so that the system can repair cells, the immune system can enhance, our gut can repair. So again, I said at the very beginning of this, we often just say the parasympathetic is rest, digest. That is half true. Part of the dorsal branch of the vagus is rest, digest. But the other part, the other gear, we could say, is the high tone. So depending on the state of the person, depending on the situation, a person will either be living and revving in high tone, let's call that like fifth gear of the dorsal vagal branch, or they'll be in a low tone, let's just say, you know, neutral of the, the vagus branch, just resting, recouping, regenerating, repairing. So going back, we've got this autonomic nervous system. It's got the sympathetic, it's got the parasympathetic. The parasympathetic has this dorsal branch or the vagus nerve back of the brainstem goes to the gut and it is responsible for either shutdown or 
rest and digest. Easy, calm being. That's like lounging at the beach, just chilling out. Now, the next part of this vagus nerve, hope you're still with me, is the ventral vagal branch of the parasympathetic. And this is where this book here, the discoveries that Porges made are very interesting. So ventral vagal branch of the parasympathetic means that that branch comes in front of the brainstem. It goes to the face, the ear, the mouth, the pharynx, the larynx, the heart, the lungs, everything above the diaphragm. Interestingly enough, when we're born, a little baby, their ventral vagal branch of the parasympathetic is not myelinated yet. So myelinated myelination of nerves helps things go fast and smooth. It makes things refined. The potential is there, but it has to get, let's say, polished up. It has to be used with good connection, good attunement, good attachment, and a caregiver or a mother or a father who can help us learn how to engage and self-soothe. So what's interesting is that when we think about calming a baby down, what we're doing by talking to them, rocking them a little bit, looking into their eyes, making faces, that is sparking up the ventral vagal branch of their parasympathetic nervous system. And that, interestingly enough, connects directly to the heart and it lowers the heart rate. It affects the pacemaker of the heart. So we want that good connection, not just when we're infants, but when we're adults. Think about when someone has an accident. It's known that if someone has connection immediately after, after an accident and they're soothed and they feel safety, their likelihood of getting PTSD is less. And that is because that settling, that self-regulation is occurring as a result of that connection through the ventral vagal branch of the parasympathetic nervous system. It's a big one. So just to review again, we've got this parasympathetic nervous system. It's got a lot of responsibility, immobilization, rest, digest, and this other ventral aspect that is to connect and engage. Here's what's interesting. When we have got trauma that is trapped in our system, in our survival physiology, in our organs, in our tissues, we will often live in one of two states in that mobilization, sympathetic, that, that wanting to get, go, leave, be hypervigilant, or what we find is more common in our society is we live in that freeze state, that parasympathetic dorsal vagal shutdown, that, that part of the nerve that goes to the gut, that preserves. Remember I said that that part of the vagus nerve, that parasympathetic, that dorsal shutdown, it puts us into low metabolism. It puts us into that, it's almost like low gear. You know, it just doesn't get moving. For anyone who has chronic conditions, depression, fibromyalgia, autoimmune, you know that is characterized by this lack of flow, feeling lethargic, feeling heavy, having gut problems, immune system problems. So when there is this revving of survival stress that is still in the system, and the system is trying to protect through a shutdown response, we would be living more in that high tone dorsal and it isn't healthy. We only wanna stay in that for like minutes, but many of us have been living like that for decades, if not lifetimes. So trauma, again, trapped trauma, unresolved trauma, untreated trauma, it will create this, this high tone dorsal or sympathetic or a blend of both. Sometimes they're both mixing around like a cocktail. In order to heal, we need to spark up that social engagement, that ability to connect to ourselves, connect to our environment. I've done some other videos on the orienting response and how so important it is to understand what orienting is. I will post that below as well. If you think about this ventral vagal, this nerve that goes to the face, the neck, the heart, the lungs, all of it, by actively facilitating more engagement with the environment, the engagement with ourselves, actually doing a little bit of self biofeedback with all the ways we do that. Some people use breath work, I teach neurosensory exercises, ways that we reteach ourselves how to calm down and self-regulate that is directly going to this ventral vagal branch of the parasympathetic which then in turn allows that 
that high dor dorsal tone parasympathetic that wants to shut down and freeze, it allows that to be less on guard, less on board. One of my mentors, Kathy Kane, will say, when we have unresolved stress physiology in our system, the freeze response and the sympathetic responses will run the front of our bus. Someone who is healthy and has regulation, what runs the front of their bus is that social engagement, social connection branch of the ventral that helps the heart rate come down, but they're also being dominated by that rest digest. Dominate is not the best word, but the rest digest uh, part of the parasympathetic will be more dominant and then you have better health because when you live more in that rest digest, it allows the cells to repair, the immune system to repair, and so on. Okay, so quick review. Polyvagal means many vaguses, many branches of this vagus nerve. It's actually called the wandering nerve because it goes everywhere from face to here, to heart, to lungs, to gut, all the way down to the reproductive organs, all of it. There are these branches, parasympathetic, sympathetic, Parasympathetic has two branches. It's got that rest, digest, and then that shutdown. And we want to facilitate and foster getting out of that shutdown, out of that freeze, out of the sympathetic, and into more social engagement and into more of that rest, digest. Of course, that is what I teach in my programs. If you have not checked those out yet, be sure to. I will have that all linked below. And thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for learning. And we will see you next time. Bye.